Welcome everybody. This is number five in a series of six meetings regarding the um, Yuba City's CalPERS unfunded liability and pretty much CalPERS unfunded liability as a whole. But if you haven't done so, please sign in. If you haven't done so either tonight or previously, because we want to make sure we have your email and contact information to keep you informed. You probably know I'm Sean Harris, your mayor, and, we, and we, over here is Dave Shaw, council member, Robert, Robin Bertagna, our finance director. Behind the monitor is Tara Locke, and in the back we have Spencer Morrison. Um, just as a reminder, uh, this session, along with all of the previous sessions, is video and audio recorded for posterity's purposes. And um, just to recap real quick, we've heard previous meetings from Finance Director Robin Bertagner regarding the Yuba City's actuarial re reports and some of the steps the city has already taken. Um, Dane Hutchings, a former legislative advocate with the League of California Cities and also from David, and uh, forgive me, David, wherever you are, if you have mispronounced your last name, I'm gonna say Tykerts um, and Kurt Schneider from CalPERS. So the purpose of tonight's meeting is just basically discuss recommendations and solutions. Dave will, will likely go over what we've talked about so far. Terrell has taken some very uh, detailed and thorough notes um, and noted any and all suggestions and commentary that may be relevant as we move forward through this process. So tonight we're going to recap, go over a few things. And then the final meeting is on uh, December 17th, uh, same time, same place and we will discuss what we're going to do moving forward um, as, a, as a group. So that being said, uh, Dave, if you maybe would consider leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then kick it off, we'll leave it to you. All right, please stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, we are. Okay. All right. Well, if you guys haven't figured out by now, I get to sit on that end of the dais about two or three times a month. Uh, I'm Dave Shaw, and uh, I'm one of your council members. Uh, I've had the privilege and honor of working with Mayor Harris over the past uh, five months to try to figure out what the heck we're going to do with this whole big mess called PERS, CalPERS to be exact. We're going to walk backwards, see where we've gone. We're going to look at facts that are over us. We're going to look at the ideas that's been brought out. And we're going to try to figure out what the action is we go from here tonight. Okay? This isn't my plan. This isn't the mayor's plan. This is going to be something we figure out together. When you look at the facts, it starts leading into a lot of the things that we've already heard earlier about where this thing really needs to go. But we want to set the tone and the record straight for what's really going on, get rid of some of the um, falsisms that we've heard through all, throughout this journey and really control what we can control and where do we take the fight next. So as the mayor said, we started back in August and uh, we had the report from Robin and then we've had Laura Nicholson here at all of our meetings uh, representing both uh, the senator's office and uh, assembly member uh, James Gallagher's office, because you represent both of them. Appreciate you being here. Um, we had Dane Hutchins from the League of Cities. Uh, we had the actuaries from CalPERS uh, that went over in great detail of everything that's going on there. And then here we are tonight. We're going to figure out what our recommendation solutions are, and then the mayor's going to wrap it up next month. Okay? Want to recap, again, a lot of recap in the beginning because this is videotaped and it's going to be out on the web and uh, people that may not have been to the prior five meetings. We provided everyone with a ton of data. We did not want to have anything that was held back. We want to be completely transparent. So you'll see, and we'll walk through all of these that we gave actuarial reports from 17 and we updated those when the 18s came out. Um, we have basically just opened up the books to the city to say, here's everything we know about CalPERS, this is where we stand, and you have a nice big st uh, thick stack of paper, and we put it up on the uh, website and under the council on ag uh, meetings and agendas. So if you happen to be watching this at a later date, you can always go there and find those. If you want to go back, you can always go back and find those, okay? So... Let's talk about Yuba City. Um, 
you know, how many thinks we're in a world of hurt in Yuba City? Okay. If you're talking specifically about PERS, I'd say, yeah, we're about like every other municipality in California. Yes. If you're talking about the city as a whole, no. beg to differ. The city's actually in really good shape. A lot of the slides you'll see tonight, I don't want to take credit for because the work was already done. I just get the job of kind of putting the wrapping and the packaging on it. Robin, you did a great job. Thank uh, you. The uh, staff, Carol, you've done a great job as well. Um, Spencer, I think you've probably been involved. All of you guys have done a great job. Um, League, um, CalPERS, trying to think who else has been in here. You guys, everybody has contributed to this process. So when we talk about Yuba City, we want to keep in focus tonight, not how we got here. I don't want that to be what tonight's about. We need to be looking at solutions. So I'm just going to be up front with you. If we start down an avenue that is about... We did this 50 years ago. We did this 30 years ago. They did this in Sacramento. I'm not interested. This is about going forward, okay? Because we've got an hour to get it done, and we can spend 45 minutes talking about yesteryear, or we can spend 45 minutes talking about where we're going. Looking at our unfunded liabilities, this was as of 16 and 17. You can see we're at 73 million. It decreased down to 70. And... You know, things that we um, considered during the uh, process of considering where we were going and what we're going to do is ideas came out about taking action against <coughs> CalPERS. I heard everything from Sue CalPERS. Basically, tar and feather them and run them up with a pitchfork, you know. I mean, it was that type of uh, dealing with CalPERS. We heard about require more from the employees, okay. You were talking about it earlier. We need to look at that and address that. You know, I heard, let's pull out of CalPERS. Okay, that was another option. And then the last one was assemble a unified group to address the issue with state leadership. Yes. That's really the four categories everything fell into. There was nothing else that came out of, of the ideas. They all fit into one of those categories. When we look at where we've gone, and sorry, this is a little small, but we went from, let me go backwards. We went from 73 down to 70. But then we turned around with the last actuarials that came out, and we're right here at 79. So it's gone back up. So what we've got is a moving target that is continuously changing on us. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. A lot of factors go into the discount rate with CalPERS. It has to do with the return on the investments. So we're chasing a moving target. It would be real easy if this was like a mortgage to where we could go, hey, we owe $73 million, and here's how we're going to amortize it and pay it off. Well, they tell us one year it's 70, the next year it's 72, now we're 73, 79. It keeps changing. And it changes without anything from the new employees. That is always changing, so keep that in mind. When we look at our year-over-year -year projections, you can see that it continues to go up in millions of dollars how much we are actually supposed to contribute from our city budget to CalPERS. And where are we at this year? We were at, get it there, a little over 9 million, 9.05. Okay, this was updated, and you can see this goes clear out to 2026. When we get over there, we're looking at out of our city budget, it could be as much as $11.5 million a year on our current projections. Again, can we control any of those variables? There's not a single variable we can control. Okay? Interesting fact is our 1920 uh, payment on the UAL. Our payment was 5.3 million. The interest on that was 5.1. So very little is going to principal. Okay? And again, this is rules that are set by CalPERS, and they're adjusting the rates. Um, you start getting into things such as, and I think, um, I think Marysville just did this, if, am I correct, with the uh, bonds? Is it? Yes. 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 Okay. The problem with that is, from my personal opinion, is not being financially sound because you're financing at one rate and paying a debt off 
But this number could continue to change because if they change their discount rate and the market doesn't perform, you could get rid of a balance, wrap it over on a bond debt, and then they could turn and go, oh, you owe 10 more, thousand, 10 more million dollars. Tom, how are you going to pay for it? So it's one solution. My opinion is not really the best solution, and I think that that's pretty much been across the board with like the League of California Cities and others that it's not a best practice. Okay? Um, we talked about, you know, getting out of CalPERS. Well, there's the cost. At a, a rate of 2.5% is basically $470 million. So if anybody's got $470 million that they're willing to write a check, I think we'll entertain that thought this evening. Tom, are you in? No, there is one <clears throat> other point that you didn't discuss. and Whenever you get a okay. chance, I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, that's fine. Um, actions has been done to date. Uh, we do, as a best practice at the city, have a, a stabilization fund. We've had a little over two and a half million dollars in that. We have been prepaying our uh, annual liability up front so that we don't finance it and get charged more interest during the year. We do have our new employees paying their part of PERS, and that's saving us about $2 million annually. And we are always very conscious, and you were here at the meeting um, Tuesday evening when we were ratifying employment uh, uh, contracts. We are very, very much in tune with how it affects our unfunded liability in CalPERS. And so are the labor unions as well, because they, they all understand that this looks and impacts them as much as it in, you know, looks and impacts the city, because one-time money goes into the PERS liability. If you have one-time money tied with ongoing money, then you get a differentiation. So that's why you see some of these contracts come up that have maybe a small ongoing and a little higher one-time money it's because we're looking at how to treat our employees fairly, but yet not increase the, the PERS liability in the long term. Okay, uh, short-term actions that Robin has brought to us before was pay additional contributions uh, to try to uh, lower down that uh, debt, uh, negotiate a lower tier benefit uh, for uh, new, uh, new employees to the city, and pay lump uh, sum one-time payment to CalPERS and evaluate it if it's, if it's really working. These are things that Robin has done a great job at over the past several years to get those amounts down because our amounts would be higher if she had not had us make some of the um, other payments. Long-term actions, very simple. And I actually even proposed this from the beginning, hinging on that, that bottom one there, the California rule. Get out of PERS altogether and look at going to more of a 401k style, 457, those types of things. Problem is, $490 million roughly to get out of CalPERS. We don't have that in the budget, period. Um, we would also have to negotiate that with all of our bargaining units, okay? And so we'd have to get all the uh, employees of the city, which is roughly 300 of them, to want to do that as well. And the last one that just drove the nail in the coffin was the California rule right here at the bottom, which just went through the courts. And when it went through the courts, if they had ruled in the favor we wanted, then the municipalities across the state had an avenue to say, hey, we can go back and say, we're stopping this as of now and going to have a new plan. But when the court upheld the California rule, we were toast. We can't even begin to enter it. So we've got to wait till some later date. The California rule you're discussing is you cannot reduce a pension once it's given. Is that correct? That, has, that was part of it. There was other things that went on back if I'm not mistaken, with the California rule, didn't have to do with uh, pension spikes and stuff like that as well. That was part of it, yes. Yeah, it was very complicated, but one aspect would have allowed us to just kind of exit door one and enter door two, and now we can't because they upheld it. Okay, so that's why we cannot do that. Recapping CalPERS, it's not just the municipalities. 31% uh, are actually state workers. 38% is your school employees, and 31 is municipalities like us. I brought this slide in that was brought because I really want to focus on the upper uh, box up here because this is where I think some of our focus needs to be on. It shows you everyone's responsibility, and when you start coming down, going from the upper left to right and to the, through the bottom, 
really that's where it has to start because the employees are doing their part, uh, the CalPERS staff is doing their part, the employers are doing their part, the courts are dealing out rulings, whatever's brought up to them, but it really goes back to that CalPERS board, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more here shortly, okay? Um, this shows you right here how the returns have been, and we know that they build it on trying to get a 7%, and you can see it fell just short. Thus, you get some adjustments in the uh, UALs. The pension fund itself, the members on average are paying in about 13 cents. CalPERS employers is uh, 28 cents. 59 cents of every dollar comes from the investments. So when we have <coughs> bad years like 2000, 2008, what does that do to our contributions? That means they go through the roof because we're having to subsidize because the investments did not get where they were supposed to. <clears throat> I brought this in that was brought to us from CalPERS because it tells you what they should be doing, and we're going to talk about what they should be doing here shortly, but it says investment performance is paramount. Growth assets are key. And they were specific when they brought that out that that was what their job was. But then at the same time, um, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself here, but at the same time, they also talked about, you know, things like uh, executive orders. And you were talking about, uh, one of your earlier was talking about divesting from oil. That's cool. You were. You know, CalPERS wants to divest from this or divest from that. And it's not socially acceptable. But what is the job of the CalPERS board? is actually their job should be doing what's best for the stakeholders, not what's socially acceptable. It should be making the pensions. So I wanted to bring that in because they made that a key point. Um, real re uh, quick cap of how UAL is calculated. Okay, It's our crude liability, subtracting the market value of the assets. It's real simple. Um, Required contributions, because we, you know, heard earlier as well, can, you know, let's, one of the options you mentioned, if it'll just don't pay the bloody thing, we can't. It's in law. We have to make those payments. Uh, because if we don't, then that would basically punt us out of CalPERS, and it would start all this other thing to where we would have to go put whatever we can, not $490 million, but whatever we can put in, and it would break a promise to the employees that's worked for this city over the past 50 to 80 years that are still drawing a pension because we've had uh, episodes to where, you know, their pensions would be reduced because of based on what goes into the, the conservative account, as I call it, because I believe they're running that on 2% is the growth? It's based upon the U.S. Treasury bill. Okay. Earnings. So it's around 1.5% to 2%. So it, it, would, it would be detrimental to our retirees. And I'm sorry, as a council member, I inherited that. And we made a promise. Even though I wasn't here in this chair, there was a promise made to people. we got to keep it. No, no, no. I think it was the public made the promise. Don't put it back on the council. <laughs> the council didn't do a job. The public inherited the debt. Yep. Just put it back as to where it should be. Speak about the public well, owing the money. Okay. Well, who, whoever owed it, owed it. Bottom line is there's a promise made. We yes. Promise made, promise kept. So let's talk about what our options are, and because um, I'm trying to click through this to get to these last ones because I really want us to talk about different options. Um, consider taking actions against CalPERS. Sue CalPERS was the only one that was a direct option. Did you guys have anything else that would be an option against CalPERS? Yes, I think you could uh, speak with the other counties and cities that are, at this time, have suits against CalPERS. And add your name to that. It's no use talking about being alone. You would say it's not big enough. No. No. But what were you consider? Are you considering getting in touch with the other counties and cities? We'll know when we get done with tonight, won't we? Okay, yeah. Phil, have you, <laughs> Phil, have you you're familiar with other <laughs> municipalities who are suing CalPERS? Yeah. Do you know the basis of the suit? Yeah. I have got a whole list of Okay. So you do, you have a, there's a multitude of them? There is a, a real multitude of them. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested in knowing what those were mm -hmm. when we get a chance. I have one right here. Okay. I'm going to write that up there. That's still legal action. And is there anything else that we can think of outside of 
suing them, either independently or jointly, specifically directed and targeting CalPERS. Do some recalls on some of the CalPERS board members. <laughs> so. Be nice. How about when they vote to reduce the amount of money invested in certain items, that they, they split the cost of the loss between the CalPERS board and the constituents? instead of laying it back upon the cities. Like if they were to just hypothetically divest oil, mm -hmm. the losses that they would incur, okay. split it between the constituents who absorb that because they vote the members of the CalPERS board in. We don't. They do. We don't have any voting rights on that. Okay. So let me try to quantify what you're saying here. What I'm, If they incur losses because of divesting, Yes, because of the okay. of not funding something like they don't like coal or right. oil. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so who are you saying who pays the losses? The board they split the loss between the CalPERS and the people who have their money invested in it, the constituents. Okay, so the they cover cover half the loss. Yes. Okay. That would that would stop a lot of that because the constituents aren't gonna sit still for that. Right. So you're saying if it's if they divest based on a political reason versus a strategic reason, because even those can backfire. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. There okay. seems to be more political reason than yeah. the strategic okay. reason. Okay. I would Thank like you, sir. Say something. Okay. The hey. meeting that we had last time, CalPERS didn't make the remark. They're not responsible to anybody but the employees. Forget about all mm -hmm. these other things. The really, employees are the only ones that they have to be responsible to. So the rest that you're putting down up there is for not. Yeah, actually not. And we're going to keep going, keep an open mind. You had a question? Uh, you know, I think in the beginning when this whole thing, <coughs> Alpers did some pretty shady stuff. Like, you talked about the unfinal liability is the liability, it's, they took the market value. For a while, they actually upped the market value. They won't be okay. actual. But that's all past. Assets. What but are we going to do now? But that's to make it look like we could afford we could. But now, They've really changed. The last meeting was great. The first speaker in particular, mm -hmm. they've become a lot more transparent. I think it would be good for the city to continue to work real closely with them, but let them know that you're wanting to see some changes. And they have their part, too. They're a very powerful organization, and they know they're culpable. Not to place blame, but okay. they, I think they're in more in a position now to deal with the cities. Because they want to make they want to make good. On what right. I, I I think they're trying a lot harder. And okay. That's a good thing. All right. So anything else? What we've got with direct action against Calpers is join in lawsuits with on Calpers. Look at recalling the Calpers board. See if we can get them to cover half of their losses, or ask them to be even more transparent on an ongoing basis. I say let it. Just default to CalPERS on the payment, and let it let it uh, the the retirees take a haircut. Okay. Well, now that... I know that you don't like that. Okay. But we and you and you don't want to look in the past. But the reality is they gave away the farm in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. The pensions are out of sight compared to the private sector pension pro program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's morally wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let me so rephrase that, this. That's that's where I'm looking at okay. it from. Well, let, let me let me phrase this to where we may have to agree to disagree because I think what you just said is probably equally morally as wrong as what you just said, and that is the simple fact that I'm not talking about the high pensions, but we're talking. I know people because it's all public records. That their whole pension is forty-two thousand dollars a year, thirty-eight thousand a year. Okay, there's some because it's all public records. You can go look it up. There are retired people from the city, and their pensions are thirty-eight and forty-two thousand dollars a year. They're not much. They really talk about what okay. the average is. Now, yeah. No. 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 Yeah. No. I know. Just, Don't be. Yeah. No. No. Just okay. stay with me, Phil. Okay. Okay. Um, because what I'm looking at is it doesn't take into consideration a ratio. If we default under this, everybody drops and just say that we're only able to fund roughly 10%, then they're going to suddenly get 10% of their pension. Now, 
the ones that are making one hundred and fifty plus thousand dollars a year in a pension is not gonna well fifty four. You know, I don't think we get anybody that high. Maybe but, not in this city. Yeah, but in the system you do. But what I'm getting at is what I believe is immoral is taking the ones that gave all the years to the municipality themselves and cut theirs by ninety percent. You just did a whole lot of harm to them. So we can't take that approach because as soon as we default, it's not a respecter of the high versus low. It affects them all the same, and we're really going to hurt people. We might have to re-sift uh, the deal. We can't do that, though. So that's why we can't default. California, Let me, I, you know, you're running numbers and you're running them so fast it's hard to keep up with you. You talk about reducing it by 90%. If you reduced it today and went to CalPERS and said, okay, the amount of funded, you get 70% funded. <coughs> so the employees all get 70% tough, not 90% reduction. They get a 30% reduction, correct? Sure. Well, yeah, but... So don't talk about 90%. Talk factual. Okay. Well, no, I am, Phil. Okay, very good. factual. Uh, well, I did not we don't. We don't have ten percent to give them to exit. I'm not talking about. Okay. You were talking about if we did something, the employees are get would lose ninety percent yes. of the pension. That is not factual. You've got seventy percent already is. in your pocket. No. 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 Okay. No, because they take us out of the current PERS system. I'm they about, put. I'm not talking about. And you're talking about taking it away. The money's already there. Okay, Phil, we're talking two different things, and I've got to pull this back in and be done with it because you're, you're down okay. a different avenue. Okay. The bottom line is what we're talking about with the unfunded liability is the retirees that are there. And if we decide to stop making those payments and get out, and we only make 10% of that 490, then their pensions drop by 90%. They make that very clear from PERS was here because they run it on about a 2% uh, uh, compounded basis. And it does have a direct effect. So that's why just walking away is not an option. Because you're not just messing with current employees or yourself. You're messing with a lot of retirees. And that is drastically unfair. I didn't talk about that. Okay. You were the one that brought it up. Yeah. But no, I brought it up. He brought it up. But we got, we got to be crystal clear. Well, crystal clear. If you stop paying you, your unfunded liability and you do not make a $490 million payment, their retirement will get cut in percentage based upon what percentage we fund. That's okay? exactly what was said by the guy that was here from CalPERS. Exactly. That's, right. That's exactly what was okay. said. Okay. So let's go on to the second option. Okay. We said let's start requiring more from the employees. Require employees to understand the cost of their CalPERS. I can tell you after going through it, they, they get this. Uh, you sat in with... Um, you know, the labor negotiations and stuff and have all that kind of going back and forth. They understand the burden that's going on. And we had some here, but I will tell you exactly, in my opinion, why we don't get more of the employees here to discuss it. And that's the second item, because it's already come up. And it's considered lowering salaries and wages. You know, I can tell you, as we started before the, the uh, meeting tonight talking about, this council has gone through the budget and looked at things, and the budget is aligning with the city's priorities, and there's not this massive swing of things being out of line, okay? And so, you know, it'd be like me coming to either of you and saying, hey, will you take a 20% pay cut? How about you? You want to take a 25% pay cut? Hey, here's the deal. So, I take it. I have taken it. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm in the private sector. Yeah. Okay? When the market's low, we take a haircut. That's yep. just the way it is. That's yeah. okay. Is. Tom, you forget what I do for a living. Yeah. Okay? So, I'm in the private sector. I know. But, but I'm just telling you, that doesn't work with me, yeah. man, because I've already taken the haircut before. Right. Okay. And so has the employees of the city, because likewise, they went through furloughs and stuff. They've also unfunded and unfilled positions to try to get the city along, but also meet the budget. So, you know, that's all being done every bit that it can. And we just reported out at the meeting Tuesday night, Robin did, that we have actually got our ratio back to 97% filled. Yeah, I think it's about 98.2. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're up there of getting <laughs> all the positions filled as needed for the city. But here's the thing. If we'd have continued on the trajectory that we were going on, it should have been way up here. 
And we filled almost all the positions, and yet our cost has not gone up the way it should have. So I commend Robin, and I commend this council with the mayor of what we've done in the last year to try to really bring that around. Because without the people, we can't service the needs of the city. Question. So, sure. Do the new employees, <clears throat> are they paying 50% of their pension costs? It depends on the labor groups and negotiations, but they are paying into their PERS. And we'd, I have to defer to Robin, and I'm not sure how far we can go into that because a lot of them are paying in various stages. The Pepper employees do pay 50% yeah. of the normal cost. Okay. So these are the new employees? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is the yeah. Pepper? This is Pepper. Yeah. It's the classic people that we've got the... And classic pay their pay a share. It's 8% um, for miscellaneous and 9 for safety. Okay. Yeah, but the cost is much higher. Exorbitant, than that. yes. Right. right. So, right. see, there was some. Hold on. All questions through me. Okay. How many Pepper employees are there in the city? How many Pepper employees? Approximate? Lynn, do you happen to know? <laughs> yeah. We can get that and bring it back at the next meeting, the next okay. PERS workshop. Um, an estimate, I would say probably at least half, okay. if not closer to two-thirds now. Okay. We've had a lot of classic folks retire <laughs> in recent years. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of really young employees, and they're all PEPRA, so anybody who's under 30 is, yeah. is automatically so. going to be in PEPRA because all, they've never worked in All the new employees, but okay. not the total number of employees. Yeah. Because the documents no. you gave us, the first... No. The okay, first hang on. Okay. Every, even though you're the manager, please go through me. The first... <laughs> The payments no. you gave us the first meeting, when you add up all the accrued liabilities, you have about seventy million in three three fifty and two point seven and fifty five, and only less than one million for pepper. So you have very few well that you're talking. At this point. <laughs> okay, wait, total, let, total employees. Okay, you're you're talking the liabilities. Say we're talking employees. We got almost two thirds of our employees now are on the pepper system, not the old system. So we're getting more and more of our employees off of right. the old system where it was a, a huge liability for city onto the new system where they're paying 50 percent so, michael did you have something well the liability per employee is going down <clears throat> as more pepper employees enter the system right it's significantly less than the enhanced retirement programs so to answer the question that okay. was asked we have about 300 people on the payroll of the city and if you got two 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 thirds of them on the PEPRA, yep. you got two hundred employees. It's very simple, right? Yep. Very simple. There's your answer. There's your answer. Should go. Now we only have to consider the hundred, right? That's We're going to send them straight to Phil's house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, and I, Lynn, thank you for all your help too. I was said I was going earlier. My head's going, and it's got Dayquil in it. So I, my apologies, but thank you for everything you've done as well. So, um, and before I go to the last one, and since I just asked him to go through me, has everyone met our new city manager, Michael Rock? No. Yes. This is our our new city manager, Michael Rock. He's uh, doing a fabulous job. Question on knowledge of I appreciate you coming. Are you a new employee? <coughs> Are you under the pepper? No, I'm a classic employee because I'm old. Oh, <laughs> so I, I'm a <coughs> of fortune. So, <laughs> so, can you explain that to us? Oh, that a, so that's two percent of fifty-five if you're a classic member of PERS, and so if you've been in the system your whole career, uh, under PEPRA's laws, they decided to allow you to to move from one city to another agency to another mm -hmm. without having to go to the PEPRA, and as you can imagine, that is for competitive reasons, and so that. Otherwise, everybody would just have left the system and gone somewhere else. So they were trying I to stay in one place. The system. Uh, and, you know, there's also a problem <coughs> with hiring people, right? There's not enough people. Uh, there's not enough bodies in the system that are under under 40. There's not enough people. So you, you've hey. got to have enough people yeah. working in public service. So we all face that same issue. Yeah, the private, private sector. Yeah, private too. sector too. Oh, yeah. So yeah, qualified people, absolutely. that's mm -hmm. big time. But you, you can come in as a new employee and you might be in PEPRA and you might not be in PEPRA. It really depends on have you been a PERS eligible employee. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. And so basically two-thirds of our, 200 of our 300, <laughs> this was their first entry basically to CalPERS and they're under the new system. How okay? do they, 
you know, I think we've got time tonight. We don't have to go for an hour. We can go for. How does that 200 people? How do they feel about? Uh, if I were one of them, I'd feel I'd be shafted. It's the right. rules. I, I mean, what I mean, I don't care what the rules are. The rules are rules. But yep. if I were coming in here, I think that I would say I'm doing the same work as this guy here. Jesus, the court should come out and look after me, right? Yeah, but at the same time, I'll, I'll go back to when I served in the military. I know you are. But when I went in the military, at 20 years, I got 50%. And if I stayed to 30, I got 75%. And it was the uh, highest rank, or the average three, is what they morphed to after. I, mine was my highest rank and, and pay for the last year. Then, before I got out, they went to the average of the last three years, and then now they've gone to where they've limited it even <coughs> further to where, you know, you basically can retire out and only get 30% of your military pay at retirement. So California is not unique. They're doing it across the board, and we see the defined benefits. The pub, uh, private sector has gotten out of it because, you know, United Auto Workers, all those guys, that, that was what imploded Detroit was the pensions. Uh, forgive so. me, and I don't want to be the one that's making all these objections, okay? No, no. I, I think I've been here more than anybody thinking no. about CalPERS. The yep. other thing that I would say is that, you know, what we, <coughs> what we have to do is to, we have to use common sense. We can't get out of PERS. We can't continue paying these high pensions. We can't, yep. uh, we can't afford to pay the unfunded liability interest. But the thing is that what amazes me is the lack of the public. The public doesn't give a damn. That's what I'm, you know, I go home, my wife says, don't talk like that. There's but about 1%. There is half of 1% of the public might show up. Look at how many people showed up here tonight. That's because they don't know what's The going people on. don't give a damn right. as long as they get their paycheck. They don't right? know because they don't want to know. That's right. Yeah. So the whole thing is what I would like. You know, you can write down all you want. But mm -hmm. When you get finished with, it's not going to be worth a... There's different things. I'll buy. sell it to you. How's that? No. When it's done, we'll frame it. We'll <laughs> sell it to you and you hang it in your house. Somebody all the proceeds will go to the PERS uh, pension trust, yeah. okay? <laughs> but the thing is, with what we're writing down, <coughs> what do you think we can do on a common sense basis? We're getting there. Good. Okay. That's what I'm waiting for. I know. I'm walking. I want to make sure we have vetted every one of these before we get to where I think we're, we're actually heading. So, do you have anything relative to what's going on or can I move forward? Oh, go ahead. Okay. I know you don't want to hear that much from us. Go ahead. <laughs> if, uh, you know, Dave, if I, I just went back up to what Phil was saying, you know, Mr. Burns referred to the so-called haircut. That goes, when we, what we can't do is for current employees because the promise is made uh, legally and, and morally that Dave referenced. But when Phil talks about how other employees might feel like they're getting ripped off, there are different tiers, there are different things that people come on, new employees, not necessarily new to the PERS system, but new employees, when they sign on the dotted line and apply for that job, they knew what they were getting into. And those benefits are not necessarily as enhanced as, as older or you know, classic employees. And that is a step in the direction that you referred to, Mr. Burns, is we're trying to address that. It is a long-term solution, but that is exactly what that's designed to do. They, they, can't, they can't cry no fair because they knew when they applied for the job what they were getting into. Times are tough, and that's what we're looking at. So there you go. I will, I'm going to hit one more thing on this, and uh, one thing that was brought up was the uh, strong arm or the union influence. And I will tell you now that this city doesn't have the problem that other city has uh, because we have been going through this year with all the labor negotiations and such. And I will tell you, even though they're union, these guys care about the city, and these ladies care about the city, and they understand it. And I've seen them actually, I mean, and, and heard about them over the years giving up things because they just wanted to, to have their jobs and keep the city going in the right direction. So I don't think the union influence is as big of a problem as it was initially brought out. I think that was in our very first meeting. So uh, they really do care about the city. Um, Excuse me. It used to be... Go ahead. The employees work together mm -hmm. on whatever they want to change in their contracts. Yep. But when Sutter County voted for this pension change, you guys immediately changed to union. 
I don't mean you because you're on the board. I mean the employees. They immediately got a union worker instead of the employees union. And that is what caused the problems. Yeah. And there may have been such some in the past. I'm just telling you my recent experience. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people and very, very reasonable. And I have accolades because I have seen the bad situations. And we have some really great people here on our team. So, so absolutely. Um, let's see. Boom. Here we go. Uh, the other one was pull out of Kapers. We've already talked about this. 401k, California rule. File bankruptcy, not an option. We are financially strong other than this noose around our neck called CalPERS. Uh, walk away, we don't have 470, and we can't just simply not pay the UAL because it's required. So we know that's not an option. So what are we driving to, which gets back to some of the things that was hit here? And I think this is really the cusp of where we've been building for for the last, you know, five months. It is really assemble a unified group to address the issue with state leadership. Form a coalition to petition uh, state for change. Uh, we need to be looking at non-political based investments, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about these in just a moment. Address how the board is appointed and invest in more investment choices. Okay, when we start looking at these, I'm going to go back to some of the comments that was made from the uh, people from CalPERS. And um, because of what I do, I'm an investment advisor. So this is my world. I understand fiduciary responsibility. I understand what they're supposed to be doing. Um, the first thing is, is you know, non-political based investments. We have, it gets back to the board appointment. So Laura, you can step out if you want to, because I'm about to go all over Sacramento. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you can just do this. Um, but to me, <coughs> I, have, I, I am a fiduciary when it comes to investments for my clients. I understand that role. Their job as a board is to be an independent body to do what is best for their stakeholders, which is the retirees, to get that money out and meet those pension needs. It's atrocious that we've got to where this is not socially acceptable, this is not socially acceptable, you know, I'm plaid party, green party, whatever. You know, I don't like this. We're not going to do this. And for the governor to write an executive order that the board doesn't have to follow, but he appoints about two-thirds of them. Yeah. To me, it's a conflict of interest. It violates the fiduciary responsibility rules, and I think it's something that needs to be addressed. And so that gets into the second and third points. And then... The bottom line is invest in more investment choices. It's really straightforward that at the end of the day, it's just like what an investment advisor does. You find out what the <coughs> goals are. As I tell people, if I've got a, a, a point in place over here that I'm going, I can figure out how to get there because I'm here. But if I don't know where I'm going or it keeps moving, I definitely got to have the GPS that's in my car that's continually rerouting me to tell me where to go because this part's moving. We need to figure out what that point in time is. So does this sound like where we need to start before I go down even further avenues? I think the top one's the only one that you have to rely on. <laughs> Thank you. So, but... Uh, <clears throat> I have a question about the Gulper's board. Mm -hmm. The governor appoints most of the members of the boards. Yes. Is there any members of the board that are appointed by not the governor and not the unions to represent the citizens of California? Actually, I don't think so. They all either come from within CalPERS or the union, or most of them are appointed by the board, but you would know, Robin, please. We just had a vote on, on one of the CalPERS members. Yes, mm -hmm. the director. Of right, but it's from the members. There's not. I can't vote on a CalPERS person. So Can I? Out here in the Hang street, on. we call that a rigged game. Yep. Thanks. Local government employees do get to select, I believe, one board okay. member. So it's not much. Not much. But not the public. Right. Not the right. public. Okay. So when you start looking at this, you know, it's, we really have to look at, again, what can we do as one city? Not much. We even heard from the uh, gentleman from the league who said, the governor doesn't want to hear it. The state legislature doesn't want to hear it. Um, 
The league at this part doesn't want to hear it because it's all falling on deaf ears. And you have to look at the political climate. And I'll be right honest with you right now in California, if it doesn't have to do with California burning down, they pretty much don't want to hear it because that's the hot topic right now. Am I correct, Laura? Is how do we stop California from burning? That's one of the big ones. They also just said that they've got a $7 billion surplus <coughs> that just came out in the, in the uh, news. Okay? So how do we address this? I would strongly suggest, based upon what you guys started with, that we take action on this and that we as a city reach out, and I would say start locally right here first, Marysville, Sutter County, Yuba County, Live Oak, Gridley, just start around us to start getting people to come on board with us. And what changes are we petitioning? It's very simple. We need help, and I can think of a couple of really good ideas right off the top. Number one, we went back to um, the investment fees, okay? If you're having somebody do investments for you and you have no control over what the investments are going to be in and they want to charge you a fee, do you think that's fair? No. Depending. You're paying for, their, you're paying for experience and knowledge. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. You, you have absolutely no say. You could, you know, okay. you have no say. Just play along with me and say yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that as we were running, as we were running numbers and yes, Phil, I run numbers very, very fast. It was about a quarter to a half percent was the management fee for CalPERS. Mm -hmm. We missed the mark by about a quarter percent. So if the state out of the general fund was to simply pick up the investment management fee and let all the profits stay in for the retirees, that would help stabilize the fund. There's one idea. Why well, didn't do that now? We didn't write the rules. They did. Okay? Again, you got to ask. You got to think outside of the box. So that would be one. Um, number two. Would you write that down, please? Sure. I have to pay my investment fees for my broker. It comes out of my assets. Yes. But you, you, but you should be working with your, your, your uh, advisor as well. But anyway, so. Okay. State. Cover. Investment. Fees. I okay. eat the taxpayers. Huh? I eat the taxpayers. As a whole. Yeah. But out of the general budget. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, because, again, they're controlling where it goes. The next one would be, the things that came to mind is, they're down all these avenues with executive orders for social unacceptable investments and can't do this and can't do that. Why don't we ask the state... If you're going to impose all of these restrictions, if it doesn't make the returns, why doesn't the state general fund cover the loss instead of putting it back on the municipalities? And I just got a mm, from Laura. <laughs> well, that, that well, that was the same thing I brought up, but making the retirees pay part of it, and that would make them more cognizant of it and be more prone to it. vote members into the board not to do that. We have changed the board. Amen. Okay. Which won't happen. No, that's a hard thing, especially with the governor appointing them. Yeah, the idea is we're not going to come up with the ideal fix, but we've got to come up with something to ask them. Yeah. Okay? But you the asked for the sun and the moon. The legislature can change the way those board members are appointed. Okay? You're down the next avenue. Only if the governor signs the bill. <laughs> right? Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. <coughs> I can be there. That's well, tough. We can decide yeah. to recall. Figure out and change the board appointments as far as there's too much control in, in one thing. Now, I have one other thought on this one, and this is where I get to take off my councilman hat and get to put on my other hat that I do every day. There's a little outfit called FINRA that controls investments, and they oversee investment policies, and one of the big things they have going on right now has been the fiduciary responsibility rule, and they've been on this for several years. We could also take the same coalition with a letter to FINRA asking them about this one thing here because it is a direct conflict of the fiduciary rule because you have a single person, no matter who it is, appointing more than half of the board, giving executive orders that don't have to be followed, that continue to fall 
be followed that turn around and affect the returns. There needs to be a true fiduciary responsibility there and accountability. Well, that would seem to like that should almost go to the top of the, of the list. Almost. Well, you can do it simultaneously. These are all things that we're going to kind of formulate as we go. The last one that I would have is defined. Write that in big block letters. Defined? Defined. Defined what? Defined uh, payments. Oh. Defined pensions. Okay. What about defined pensions? How are we going to do it? There is nothing in the world today that's defined where something is guaranteed forever. You're saying Except how pensions. are we going to get rid of yeah, we have to Yeah, we have to get rid of the word defined. Mm. Period. After, if we get rid of that, we've got the whole thing straightened out. I think that's set in the, as codified in the Internal Revenue Code, though, because that's what they call it. <laughs> so, uh, no, excuse me. Go ahead. The first speaker from Calvinist, mm -hmm. the last meeting, he, he made the distinction so they may be defined, but they're not guaranteed, which is a very powerful statement coming from Calpers. Okay, now I'm with you. If the market crashes, all bets are off. Mm -hmm. Just head for the exits. And if the market crashes, does that leave the taxpayers on the hook for the balance? Mm hmm. Absolutely. There won't be a comment. Defined versus guaranteed. I know, I know, now I remember where you're going. Okay. But you made the comment that they're only as good as the municipality is writing the check. That's correct. I think you said that in the very yeah. beginning. We have, so. 17, we have 17 municipalities in California right now and they're verge bankruptcy because of CalPERS. Mm -hmm. so, so the big thing is, is you know, this may end up falling on deaf ears, but we don't need to come out of here without some kind of ask. Okay, and I realize asking for them to cover the losses, yeah, they're probably going to laugh us right out of the state house. Cover the investment, eh, we might get some traction, probably not. Maybe upending the board might get some traction because we can send that same letter to Penra because that has to do with something that's, uh, they've got, uh, the SEC has Reg BI, which stands for best interest, which gets all into this thing, and is that board doing what's in the best interest of the stakeholders? There's another and one. They're not. Mm -hmm. There's another one came out, and that's been cut off. <clears throat> retroactively enhanced the benefits without notifying the public, nor running it through the account, the auditors at the respective. Companies. Oh yeah, what was the? Yeah, that was more transparent. If we fall under that. That was the. I'll just put retro over here beside it, because that was what he said. They can uh, come in and audit and find a mistake, and then bill you for it, even though they gave you the wrong advice to begin with. That's correct. So. And ultimately, that's a true statement. Uh, that's, a, that's a horrible thing. What, ultimate? <laughs> it all boils down to accountability. And that's what we've got to get back to, is there's got to be accountability at the state level because it's, it's really hurting the municipalities. So, it's, it's you know, one of the things that I, you've heard me complain all the time, but last <coughs> meeting we had, I, I couldn't believe that you got four people from CalPERS to come up to you to see. I mean, that was unbelievable to think that that number would come up. I have a gripe. We cut them off, and I think it was shameful. We gave them an hour and a half. We could have sat here for three or four hours with them. But we closed it down. For what? It was the right of the public to keep those people. I've been griping on this since 2003, okay? We've had CalPERS came up one time to this city in that period of time. Yeah. But they did and a very good presentation. They, and, and they gave us a lot of information. Oh, yes, yes so last time. Very good. No, but the whole thing is, we should have allowed them yeah. to give us a lot more. Uh, Phil, we... They can only do so much at one time. We gave it, Rob and Coordinate, they knew they only had so much time, and they came with so much more information, and every bit of their presentation is out there if you need it, but... We can always bring them back if we yeah, need to in the future. But that's what I'd like to see them come back up. Yeah. So, you had a question. I have a, you know, um, because you're in investment, <coughs> and um, if there's risk, it's got to be stated so that people know there's risk involved when they're investing in this mm -hmm. thing. And um, recently there was a decision I learned from a, a speech presented at um, Hillsdale College okay. that um, the investments for our retirements that are related to Chinese investments that are um, companies that produce um, aircraft for the 
uh, our enemies, mm -hmm. our terrorists. They do cameras for their prisons. Um, in that are all ethnic scourging in China going on, and there's there's a lot of um, stuff to, that's missiles pointed at American cities, and all these things that are now on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, there's a large percentage of Chinese companies that get onto our New York Stock Exchange, and a larger amount are being bought for our investments, for our retirement. Yeah. So if, if we have uh, public starts learning about what their investments are in that are going against our very freedoms, those stocks could be dropped. They could go down and be at, we're at greater risk by the kind of investments we put into an, a known enemy. Mm -hmm. So I would think because it's, um, well, it's um, illegal not for an uh, investment company to not let us know the known risks. And I think that we should present to Cal Purs that this is a known risk to invest. They're, they're, um, one, the, the big <coughs> is for the federal employees. And they just made a ruling that they can now invest in the world global, not mm -hmm. just the developed countries, right. but all the um, start even in these kind of companies like Chinese companies that are on our stock chains. And a bigger percentage of our retirement is going to be at, at higher risk. Mm -hmm. That's what we should also consider. Yeah, there's trying to step from one hat to the other, there's a right. lot in that comment that you made there because, on the one hand, you've got what's in the best interest of the stakeholders, on the other hand, you've got what's in the best interest of the country. And uh, they're they're if, two. If people start shying away from some of those investments, mm -hmm. other people that find out that aren't us, even if anybody mm -hmm. starts shying, our value goes yeah. down as well as our. Yeah. What I'm going a lot to different than other. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back to the underlying principles of what the board should be doing. The board has a fiduciary responsibility. And there should be investment policies, not executive orders, that. Right craft out what they can and what they can't do, and that's what they should be doing. So that's, it's, it's going to be another level of discussion, but it all goes back to the board. So does, Robin, do you know if CalPERS publishes all of their investments? I know they're a market mover, so they have to. So they should somewhere. I would think so. I know that they provide reports to their board regularly, so I can check their agenda and see what I can find. Okay, that might be a good idea if, if, if it's available at our final meeting, maybe we can pull up what the current uh, portfolio is for CalPERS just to kind of see. Could you, could, the safer investments. They, okay. Could you explain to everybody here as to how this all began? Oh, you just want you just want kudos, don't you, Phil? Where I've been there, but could you tell me where you know? You don't have to listen to me. I'd rather you know you're the you're the expert. I, 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 thought, just, I thought you agreed we were not going to go back and look at the past. No, right. Moving forward. The reason I say this is because Cal Pers came up and told us that they needed seven and a half percent in order to make this thing work. Correct. Last time. Oh, I thought you were talking about how these meetings came. Oh, no. no, yeah, no, I'm with him. We're not going to go backwards, Phil. We're not going to go backwards. At seven and a half, seven and a half percent, calipers could look after the pensions. Yeah. But over a thirty-year period, they got eight point one percent. So there is no such thing as non-funded liability. Yeah. Now it's it, what happened in the past happened across <laughs> industry-wide. I mean, it's. But that's you, you can, It's like it's like the new map. You can make the numbers match whatever you want them to be. So. That's how we got here. Um, does anyone else have anything else they want to add to this before I start handing this over to uh, the mayor to wrap us up for the night? Yes, I do. Sure. How about raising the retirement age from 52 back up to what it was before? Okay. The city did, uh, for classic employees, put another layer in, so all new classic employees. It's a lesser benefit than the previous classic employees, so that has helped some, but it's still not as high as it is for PEPRA. So PEPRA is two at 62. Um, the classic employees that get hired on now that have been in the PERS system is two at 55. Um, police officers uh, are three at 55 instead of three at 50 if they already have experience, so there is a difference there. 
finance directors are minus five at 75. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Um, yes. And he's on to something, which is that I believe there'll be another pepper reform mm -hmm. coming. We started it. That was the first step. It was not an easy thing to accomplish when they did pass pepper, um, but it got done. And the second phase, I believe, is coming. And when it comes, they'll probably raise the retirement age again. And they'll probably ask employees to pay a larger share towards their uh, retirement. And so, so that's another option. There yep. will be more reform. And the only problem is it won't come until there's a, a crisis, because that's right. the only time we can ever accomplish anything is when we're under stress and crisis. Mm -hmm. But it will come, and it will. <clears throat> well, and every time a new employee gets hired who's not already in PERS, you're helping the system to become whole. The other problem that is making this worse is the fact that there are fewer employees in the system today than there were five years ago. Because the baby boomers are such a large group of people that when they started retiring, and they're still retiring, you can't replace them. There aren't enough bodies in the world to replace them in the Gen X. The Gen Xers is a very small group of people. And those workers just don't exist. They're just not out there. And so the system has more people retired than working, almost. They're almost hit that point now. And that's, that's not something that any one person did. It's demographics. And so fixing that is extremely difficult unless you pay more into the system to make it solvent. No, you're spot on. Yeah. Spot on. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're running out of time. Okay, because I, I'm trying to respect everybody's time. Yes, Bill, we could be here till 10 o'clock. I'm doing good that my voice has lasted for an hour because I did not have a voice two nights ago. Uh, I want to make sure anybody else that hasn't contributed has had an opportunity. Do you like anything you want to add, sir? I don't think it would be politically correct. <laughs> I got thick skin, so. Okay. Okay. The way I see it, that, granted, it's my first time coming to your meetings, okay? The way I see it is Yuba City... Uh, got in bed with CalPERS, mm -hmm. knowing, I mean, obviously a contract was signed. We got, in, we got into bed with them. We, they've got our, their hooks in us. And now we're trying to blame them and castigate them and say, hey, we don't want to pay what we agreed to pay. That's right. I think that what we should do is assemble a unified group. I think suing to remove a liability that we accepted is absolutely incorrect. Um, can we save money by doing things with the employees? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the public having a say in, in uh, PERS, mm -hmm. no. PERS is paid for by the employees who pay into PERS mm -hmm. and their monies. Um, the Constitution of California explains exactly what kind of retirement we're supposed to get. You want to change the Constitution? Change it. But to go retroactively and say, oh, well, because uh, CalPERS uh, member doesn't know what's going on, we're going to cut his retirement? That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The only thing I see is, number one, yep. work with the legislature, work with CalPERS, mm -hmm. and come up with a solution. The whole rest of this, I, I don't think it's appropriate. I think it's totally inappropriate. We none, willingly got none into of bed. these. We willingly got into bed with CalPERS. Mm -hmm. CalPERS has been around since 1932. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we made a mistake. We're in bed with the devil. Whatever you want to call CalPERS, right. we made the devil's good. We, we made an agreement. Mm -hmm. We signed contracts. Now we want to get out from under the liabilities. <coughs> oh well, this is why we signed a contract. The only thing I see is work with uh, CalPERS. Work with state leadership mm -hmm. and come up with a solution. And that's that's kind of what we're trying to do here. What are we going to yeah, ask this them? This has a lot more than just that one statement. Yeah, but that that is an action. We're going to work with them with a coalition. But what are we going to ask them to do? That's what we're trying to well, come up you, with. You're talking about suing them? Oh no no no! Those were all the things that were off the table. Okay. But this is what we're looking at. Just so we're clear, is forming a coalition and starting to look at parts of this down here to, to what are we going to ask them when we go in and say, hey, we want you to fix PERS, and they're going to go, well, what do you want us to do? Well, why recall CalPERS board? Oh, this was, 
unless you're a member of PERS, you have no authority, you should not have that. That's up to the yeah. members of PERS. Let me, let me, let me do this for you. The, the public. The employees do. The, the employees who pay into PERS. But also the employees pay. The employers pay more than the employees do. Okay. I'm bringing it back in. Does this help? There's a, there's a bright line right there. This was all the early stuff. This was after we started talking about the, what we can do, the, uh, what we can do with a, a coalition, okay. which is ask them to cover the investment fees because they're the ones that's in charge of the investments. Cover losses if they create policies that cause us harm. Um, look at a more independent way that they're doing the boards possibly versus defined versus guaranteed, have accountability, and possibly raise retirement age. We're not talking about suing them. It was one of the things that was up there. You, we were talking about you were yeah. talking about joining other municipalities and counties. I yeah, think that's, I, that's totally inappropriate. Yeah, no, that was this was just okay. things that were brought up. Phil, we wrote down early on. We wrote down everything. Yeah. every idea. Every idea. Just it was okay, one of those. That, yeah. That, okay. That was, okay. That was one of the very first things that came out. We so, just didn't want to discount anybody's idea, no matter yeah. you know. Okay. I mean, was. I've been I've been on Cal I've been uh, I've been retired. I'm a CalPERS member. <coughs> I paid for 25 years, yep. and to suggest that my retirement should go down because I don't take some some action, right, is absurd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's absurd. Not is it absurd? It's illegal. It's immoral. It's immoral. Just like I'm I said earlier. I'm not making a ton of money. Mm -hmm. If I was making a ton of money, I promise you, I'll try in Wyoming. Here we come. Right. But um, I'm not. You know, I think I think I think taking a a um, a peaceful or less confrontational uh, attitude mm -hmm. and doing that and seeing, hey, Cal First, we don't we're not looking to get out of bed because this is what we agreed to. But right. We're looking for a way to make it work for us because we don't have the money. Now, if you if if I were Cal First and somebody came and said that, I'd be interested in working with them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you say, well, you know, we don't like you and you're the devil and so on. Yep. What, you know the reception. I should have just given you the mic about an hour ago. We'd have been out of here in 15 minutes. No. You just summarized everything we talked about. Okay. That's the direction we're heading. All right. Um, I'm going to people I hasn't talked first yet. Anything that you want to say? Who are you pointing at? Not you, Behind Phil. Me. Behind you. Yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> I think all the points are good there. But uh, like the gentleman said, you, you got CalPERS to take care of your retirement. So the problem has to start at the root. That's where it has to start. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. I, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, I think the city takes pretty good care of their employees with all the calculations that I've done mm -hmm. on all the printed information that you put out to me. It's good. So... You know, if you keep on going, you just give a bank away. I mean, it's, uh, I mean that's just kind of the nature of the beast. And that's, that's the way it goes. And, and a lot of people, you say that the public doesn't know, there's a lot of people, they have the attitude that don't do any good to go. You know, everybody, you know, those guys are going to do what they want to do anyway. And so they, you know, they don't want to go. Now that they don't know, you talk about uh, uh, not knowing most of the, I, I don't know, I don't think I've talked to anyone that knows what the unfunded liability of the pension plan is. It's not visible to them, we don't put it out. And all the paperwork I've seen on the balance sheet, we don't have a balance sheet. You should have a balance sheet come out once in a while and show where it is. It's went from 50 million to 79 million now and hardly even, you know, in about mm -hmm. three years. A little longer than that, but yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, yeah. point, point, well taken, no, no, and it's. Well, it, it went, and from this, uh, from <coughs> 17 to, what is, 18, the last one went to 79 million, mm -hmm. plus 70 million, that's 9 million dollars. Yeah. And we're already, as we speak here now, the next year, could very well be another 10 million dollars mm -hmm. on top of it. So Absolutely. So but the market's been it's good, so we're hoping it goes the other way. <laughs> the market's been good, so we're hoping it goes the other way. <laughs> But really, you, gotta, you know, if you got a problem, you got to start at the base of the problem. Exactly. So, and, anything else? Well, just on the topic I brought up, there, mm -hmm. it would be 
it, it's kind of important that they know what our material risks are because by law they're required to inform of any material risk. Material That's part of their fiduciary responsibility. And so they need to be alerted and are concerned about those that are pointing missiles at us or um, many, many abuses against us by the Chinese. They're our risk. For the, those investments are, could be backfired. And we shouldn't be near such, um, uh, that's not a good, good to bolster up a country that's growing too fast against us. And another point is, from what the article I read is 60% of the commodities are controlled by our country. We don't, we have a stronger hand to play now than we will later once they have 60% control and they start pulling from us. We have, a, we have an open opportunity to clear ourselves of that um, problem. Yeah, yeah. the things you're talking about get into a much different conversation, though. Than yeah. Things we can't control and... I would and like to see us get out of it, because we're... There's a lot of pensions and a lot of colleges and everything are starting to invest heavily and in getting up to 20% of their investments in a, in a dead hole. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Elaine, anything else you'd like? I just want it fixed. Okay. I get a good retirement. And when they changed it and backdated it, I was only employed two days. Right, you told and us I this story. <coughs> yeah. And it was wrong. Tom, do you have anything real fast? Yeah. I do believe, I disagree with Phil. I do believe the public does have a vested interest in this pension plan. Because, okay, it's... The people's money, government doesn't create any wealth, okay? They don't earn any money. They extract it from the people. So, yeah, we got a vested interest in the program. That's what I believe. Okay. Because some we're paying for it. Okay. Uh, Laura, do you want to say anything? Or? Okay. Have we burnt your ears? <laughs> <laughs> I say that jokingly. No, Thank you so much for being here. So, uh, Robin? I appreciate the time and effort everybody's put into coming and listening, understanding better all the components of CalPERS. It's a lot of moving parts and pieces. I put you all through the boring exercise of listening to me explain an actuarial report. Um, so I just appreciate uh, the interest and the input. Thank you. Okay. Can I make one last statement? May I? Yes. May I make last statement? Brief. Brief. One out of every eight families in this city is below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. Did we have? Yeah. That's that, that's unbelievable. At twenty four thousand is the poverty level. Yeah. Our pensions, our city employees, on the overall as an average, would go out with a pension of around fifty seven thousand a year. Now that is for not working. Yeah. This family at twenty. I disagree, years, okay. Phil. Yeah. Yeah. That is for working for many, many, many years. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just. Okay. I'm just telling you about the poor guys. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, the year. Phil, we're okay. we're not going to go down that avenue. Okay. Because and, and I'm going to draw the line right there because yeah. again, yeah. back to what I said earlier and what this gentleman was talking about earlier as well. We made a promise. I don't care who made it before. It's people's livelihood, well, go along and you know, we have a moral it. obligation, bottom line. So anything other pertinent, I'm moving on. You were, yes, no? I just had a final comment, but it, it's not time for a final comment. Uh, this, this is the last final. Epstein did not commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> it was Mr. Green in the library with the candlestick. So, well, I mean, um, um, Lynn, did you have anything you wanted to add? Okay, uh, coming around, Mr. Rock. I mean, I, I just want to say that having looked at this for a very long time, this problem is <coughs> fixable. It will take a long time, and we have to dig our way out. But we have actually paid down the liability the last couple of years. Most cities have not done that. We did. Um, and as the labor market changes, and more millennials enter the workforce, <coughs> and as long as he, you know, in the good years when the economy is good and there's enough people in the workforce, 
then that makes it easier to deal with this, plus reform. And there will be more PERS reform, I guarantee you. There will have to be more reform. And there will be higher retirement uh, age limits. And those things will all help. Um, you know, the notion that we should cut PERS um, retirement benefits is only going to create an economy of people with less money. And that kind of an economy is detrimental to the whole state. It, it doesn't solve any problems. You just have more and more people with less and less money. And, and there are over a million people who are in the first system. So that, that's not a very practical answer because all you're doing is pushing people into poverty if you start taking away their retirement. And so from a global economic perspective, that's a very bad idea. So I just want to make sure that the big picture is, you know, we're looking at the bigger picture for the whole state. And I'm going to wrap all this up. Um, Can I say one last thing? One last thing, and this is it. Robin has worked on this for years. She really needs to be thanked for that, and I really respect her, and I hate the fact she's retired. Thank you all very much, but you're being left in very capable hands, I assure you. <laughs> there is uh, one thing that will really well, help is to have some kind of leverage over what's going on in the state legislature. <laughs> okay. 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 There's, yeah. there's, there's talk about um, okay. well, pension reforms because they retroactively approved them without going through an actuarial, through, yeah. through an auditor. And if any lawsuit like that gets into the courts, the state stands a really good chance of losing it. Yeah. Well, we're not going to get on that ship because it's already sailed. We're going to look at the coalition, and we're going to look at these points and what I want to do is between now and the next meeting, think about the points here that we raised, not suing, yeah. but what the question really is, what are we going to ask? We can't go down to Sacramento and say, hey, we want you to fix PERS and not have any ask. And it's got to be real ask. It can't be, you know, cut pensions, do this. It's got to be something that's real. How, how can we make ensure that there's a fiduciary responsibility? How can we possibly offset the cost of the portfolio management? How can we offset the uh, cost of the losses? Things of that nature. It's got to be real ask. <coughs> and then we can take that and go because we can't go down there and say, you know, as, as he pointed, you know, walk in there and go, we want it our way. Great, we're going to sue you. That's not going to work. We've got to go down there with an ask that has some real teeth to it. We've got to get other people on board with us, okay? And whether we like it or not, we are all in this together because self-employed people like yourself and myself have as much stake in this as retirees do, as state workers do, as elected officials do, because at the end of the day, it's all taxpayers' dollars that's going in, to take care of the family and team that takes care of us in the city, to take care of them when they retire, to take care of our kids. It's, it's an evolution, that circle, that continues to go around and around. We've got a moral and ethical obligation. We've got to figure out how to get from here to here. You need to come up with a financial plan that you can present. I, I did this. I'm happy to help. If you guys want my help, I mean, I can make Excel do things you don't want to know about. But if you want to put it together a plan of how we can pay ourselves out of this being behind, I'll, I'll happily work with, uh, with that, with okay. uh, wh whoever's doing it. Okay. Well, what I'm I say this, Dave, I've asked politicians to, okay, and you're a politician now, okay. I've asked politicians I've been to uh, go up the line and do some things before, and they, and they turned a blind eye to it. They said, no, 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 I can't go up there. I can't talk to those guys. So you're the first, uh, you and whoever is involved, you're the first ones that I have ever heard that had the cojones to go up and do something. So I'm going to give you that kudos today. Thank you. And I did like your report, too. So, well, here's what we're going from here. Next meeting will be, and I'm going to hand this back over to the mayor. He will be here to kind of put the ribbon on the box to figure it all out. I will ask him to close us out, let him tell you what he wants from you from the next meeting. But before we do that, do you guys kind of have a good sense of where we're going? Do you think we're going in the right direction? We've, we've taken five meetings to kind of funnel this down. And if this is the direction we're going to go, 
I know the mayor will pick it up. And then I would expect that sometime, hopefully early next year, we can have something that actually has traction to it because they don't bother me in Sacramento. I know half of them. They're people just like we are. They just have a different job. You go in and you talk to them, show them some respect, show them you're there to work. Guess what? You can get things done. We all get up and put our pants on one leg at a time. So with that, Mayor Harris, it's yours. Did you have one more thing, Rick, real quick? I have one question. If, if the city's in good fiscal shape, why was it that last year you guys were floating the idea of raising the uh, sales tax 1%? That's a completely different, different shindig. So yeah, we'll, we will, I mean, we will, why, I'm sorry, what? I said last year, it's, it's known that last year the city was floating the idea of raising the sales tax. Still are. Doubling their sales tax. Which Still is are. Million. If you're in great fiscal shape, why would you need an additional 13.4 million? I'm just curious. Because well, we can, never has enough. That is a question that we can answer, but not right here and now at the, end of the, at the end of this meeting. But that's something, hold that thought, because you're going to get, get plenty of opportunity to discuss it. That's for sure. Um, so, first of all, thank you, Robin, Spencer, Terrell, Lynn, um, and Michael for being here. Thank you all, every one of you. It, it, it's nice to be in a meeting where everyone in the room chimes in and has their opinions and their thoughts, and we, we're happy to hear from you. I think moving forward, Dave, you've, you've brought up some very good points um, based on your very clear and thorough uh, level of expertise in this topic, and it's very much appreciated. Thank you for leading this uh, meeting this evening. Um, between now and our next meeting, those of you who are interested and plan on attending, and hopefully some folks maybe watching will attend as well, um, we want to hear more from you, your ideas, because we do want to put together a unified front in writing, send it down to Sacramento, and hopefully get some answers from them, or at least a response. We don't want to go and poke anybody in the chest or kick the door down and bust a couple rounds through the ceiling or anything. We want to, we want to have the attitude we want to work with them. We want to do our part, and we want to understand because as our city manager said, this, this is fixable, but it's not something that's going to happen overnight because it certainly didn't take overnight to happen, okay? Um, but we, we are here as a community right now together, and we, we want to fix this. We plan on it. We want to hear from you, and we will um, reach out to our, our, our municipalities local to us and uh, send something to Sacramento and hopefully get some sort of a change and some ideas in place. So um, that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you um, for coming tonight, and we will see you on, if not sooner, 19th. December 17th. 19th. Oh, 19th. It says 17th here. Um, on December 19th, and we'll go from there. That being said, thank you very much. We'll see you soon.